Everyone is fighting a battle you know nothing about. H-M-M-C. You're listening to the WYE Radio Network. On this episode of What's Your Emergency Radio, Garrett Teslaw from the Squad Room Podcast. The podcast that responds to all emergencies on and off the job. And now here are your hosts, Motor Cop and the Happy Medic. Welcome to episode three of What's Your Emergency Podcast. On this show, we're going to have the creator of the Squad Room Podcast, Garrett Tesla. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, about a show there, HM. Is that tell cool? Me. Yeah, right. knock me out. Perfect. Squad Room is dedicated to optimizing, and there's a lot of things here. He optimizes a lot of stuff. Yeah. The physical, emotional, mental, environmental, and occupational health and wellness of law enforcement officers around the world. The whole world. I'm going to have to ask him about that. I'm very curious as to what environmental concerns are out there. I can understand being a fireman. You know, I go into a a, a burning building. I got somebody bleeding all over me, coughing all over me. But I'd be very curious to see what a law enforcement military uh, expert thinks is an environmental concern for you guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to this interview as well. What I've loved about listening to his show is that, that Garrett's not afraid to tackle any subject that can improve the wellness commitment to ourselves, our loved ones, and our communities that we serve. He's a great guy. Really looking forward to having him on the show. So without further ado, here is our interview with Garrett Tesla. Garrett, thanks for joining us on What's Your Emergency? How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. I am excited that you're ex- There's a lot of excitement in the room. There is a lot of excitement. It's, it's palpable. It. I was going to say palpable. It's like we're on the that, same wavelength, I, man. Fantastic. I don't know. It's one of those sixth sense type things. It absolutely is. Well, I'm, I'm stoked to have you here because I've been a longtime listener of your podcast, The Squad Room. At, so let me start by saying hey, thanks for what you do because uh, I've been able to improve myself based on your show. So uh, I'm stoked that you're here and I'm, I'm looking forward to your perspective and what you've got to tell us. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, and, you know, as a guest, you were a guest on my show and uh, I'm going to lob that compliment back across the net and say that you have you have also improved my life through your talk on my show about finances and got me and my wife uh, rolling in that front. So There you go. It's mutually uh, uh, beneficial, I suppose. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, let's let's start with the at the very beginning here. What, tell our audience how it is that you came to create the Squad Room, kind of the impetus behind it. What got you going? Uh, tell us what the Squad Room talks about and how you started it. So, uh, back in like 2013, I was uh, 2014. I was struggling with a lot of issues that were related to the job. I had about 10 years on at that point and uh, was just not dealing well with night shift, was gaining weight really fast, uh, um, uh, was, you know, just kind of seeing some of those anger issues creep up that people talk about when you're stressed and when yeah. you have, you've been on the job for a while, right, and the cynicism. And, and so these things were starting to kind of pile on. And I started looking for answers to how to navigate this because some people seem to do it real successfully, other people do it horribly. But nobody was out there, like, with a guidebook. And I figured, well, I have a lot of questions and I can't get anyone of any significant value to listen to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I, but you know, if I just, if I just called up, uh, uh Dave, Gro- Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, for example, he's not going to give me the time of day. But, uh, as I was trying to explore these questions, uh, I realized that other cops, uh, especially guys in my briefing, you know, in my nightly or date morning briefings were having the same questions. And as I was kind of openly exploring some of these questions by kind of having open conversations about them, people were coming up to me at work and saying that they had the same issue or the same challenge or the same question or they couldn't find any resources on a particular topic. So uh, being a masochist uh, like I am, I just, and also a bit of a narcissist, figured, well, I'll start a podcast where people have to listen to me, but <laughs> I, can go, I can go out, maybe I can find some answers to some of these questions, try and apply them to my own life and report back and maybe that's a way for me to kind of give back to a community that I care deeply about, which is first responders, of course. And uh, maybe I can help other people navigate through some of these issues and uh, just kind of like help them help them get through some of those initial steps of trying to figure out what they need to do. And yeah. so that's where it really snowballed. It snowballed from there, and it and it's it's really grown, and it's been a fantastic experience uh, ever you know since since episode one. 
Garrett, one of the things you talk about is physical, emotional, mental, environmental, and occupational health, specifically for law enforcement, military. Um, what do you mean by environmental health? Where does where does that fall in? And maybe uh, for our fire and EMS listeners, how can that how can that help us move forward from uh, where we are now? You know, I think it's some. It's often I'm not talking about like save the trees and all that. And when I say environmental, but in terms of the environments that we work in. Uh, and some of this is, you know, it crosses over with every, all, these all intertwined. This is one thing that I learned is that everything here is, is intertwined with each other. So occupational health includes the environment that we work in, right? And for the fire guys, they work in toxic environments and we work in, I mean, we all work in dangerous environments, but we work in potentially violent in, in, uh, environments. But also mm -hmm. what environment are you in when you're off duty? Who are the people you surround yourself? Absolutely. With? What is the environment that you're setting yourself up in to be successful uh, like a big a big part of my show is who's on your team, right? And I'm a, I'm a total advocate for that. Uh, first responders need a team of people around them to go out and do what they do, right? I mean, a Green Beret doesn't go out into the field with just some firearms training and then they're good to go. It's a, co it's a cadre of people around them that get them ready for each deployment. It's the same with us. And, you know, your team might include a, a trainer or a nutritionist or a good cardiologist or a, a good physical therapist. That's one I think is key. Uh, it could include a good clergy person if you're religious. It could include uh, a therapist, like a, a mental health therapist, a, your wife or your husband. It, so it's really that environment where, regardless of where you go, where is where's that bubble around you? Yeah, and that, that definitely rings true for me and also for MC and, and surrounding us, creating that environment where we can be successful on all fronts. You know, you, you mentioned the fire guys being surrounded by, by toxic things. And of course, everybody goes right to hazmat stuff. Uh, that, that's a very real, very physical thing, but environments in and of themselves, just in lineup, they can be toxic. Your, your cynicism, if you let that take over and you know the lieutenant walks into your, your briefing, your lineup, what have you, and says, hey guys, we're gonna make X, Y, and Z changes. Uh, what is the first thing that everybody thinks? No. Oh God. Right. I, I don't want to change anything. I mean, it sucks the way it is, but God forbid I do anything to make it better. Right. It, it's such an easy go-to right. thing. The, the it, only thing that... Go ahead. I was say the only two things cops hate are uh, change and the way things are, right? <laughs> Abs absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same on the fire side and on the ambulance uh, as yeah. well. You know, you, you discuss on your website that, that wanting to create that squad room mentality where everybody comes together to learn and share best practices and try to take those things into the field. You really took that and just exploded it into this giant, successful way of people sharing information. So thank you for that. MC, you got something else here. I do. So, you know, you and I have, have talked over over the past few months, uh, a couple of years, I guess now, and we have some similar, I guess we could say, unconventional ways of dealing in and approaching self-care that aren't your prototypical... Uh, you know, type A knuckle dragging cop way to approach stuff. Stuff like journaling sounds right. manly, right? Meditation. Uh, what kind of pushback, if any, which I'm going to assume is a, an affirmative, have you received from either people you work with, listeners? Uh, what, what's been the hardest thing to convince folks? Hey, man, put aside your preconceived notions and give this a shot. Mm -hmm. You know, from my listeners, uh, very little pushback, if any at all. And uh, but at work, a significant pushback. Uh, and I think it goes to the different environments, right? So, uh, a, I'm at work, and I'm a sergeant, so I'm a supervisor, and here I am, maybe preaching to them about something, and they want to roll their eyes because you know there goes Sarge again. Uh, but it's also a wider variety of personalities within the department versus my listeners who are people who have come to the show because they're predisposed towards wanting to learn, right? Most everyone comes to the show because they're like, there's kind of really two listeners I have. Uh, veteran cops who are dealing with these issues and are trying to navigate their way through it or young officers or guys who want to be officers who are thinking ahead and thinking, I don't want this to be me. I want to learn these things now so that I have the skills. And I get a ton of the emails from guys who haven't even gone through the academy yet. They're like, I started meditation because you said it was good and I'm, you know, it's going to help me in the academy. I'm like, that's awesome. Uh, I think there's definitely some um, stigma to some of these things still, but we're in a time where, and if you remember, like last year was like wellness was like the buzzword, right? And meditation yeah. was like a big thing. It was meditation was on the cover of Time and Newsweek like several times in 2016. So they're becoming uh, 
mainstream conversations. So it's not as weird anymore. Uh, and then some of my guests, I've had like SEAL six, uh, SEAL Team Six Lieutenant on, and uh, a bunch of SEAL Team guys and some Green Brace who all meditate and journal, and they go, "Yeah, it's amazing." And so, and I've had sports psychologists on who say, you know, top level athletes meditate and journal and do those things. So when those kinds of people are saying it, you know, when a Green Beret says it, cops t- typically perks up and goes, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot, you know, if it's good enough for them. So it's definitely changing and people are becoming more open to it. And, you know, I just had a, uh, I was at work the other night and uh, one of my young guys, I mean, a total millennial, right? He's, he's, he's barely into his 20s. And he made a comment offhand about, uh, I don't know how he said it, but he made some reference to meditation, how he's going to have to go home and meditate that night. And I kind of looked at him like I thought he was joking, like, you making fun of me? And, uh, and like, but I'm going to give you the worst beat we have, you <laughs> <Yeah>. jerk. <laughs> <laughs> turns out, turns out he, he's been meditating since he was a teenager because he had some health issues growing up, and mm-hmm. that's a skill he learned. So in the millennials, I find that the millennials are very open to all these things. They're open to trying anything because they're more connected with social media to different uh, ideas and cultures. It's us new. It's us older guys that are a little more, uh, you know, stigmatized with it. I had a, a newer guy at work, probably about six months ago. I don't know how the conversation that came up, but meditation came up, and I, I like jumped on it, and I was all excited. And, and he said, "So how you know, how do you run your practice?" And, and he's probably in his mid thirties, I believe. So you're kind of on that cusp, right, of, of millennial and and yeah. and hipster and hipster, yeah. <laughs> and single dude, man, that guy's got you know nowhere to put his money Money to spend oh yeah yeah Yeah, absolutely right poor guy (laughs) so you mentioned on on your show you're getting a lot of emails from from people who aren't even cops they want to become cops uh so thinking about the future and how there's a different approach to self-care self-awareness self-improvement uh, the 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 self-help and i'm using air quotes on a radio show radio show well done the self-help kind of Approach. I remember that being big in the 90s, but it was a little weird, right? It's no longer self-help. It's more self-improvement. It has less of a stigma to it. So when these these new jacks are reaching out or, or hopeful new jacks are reaching out to you, does it give you some kind of a, a, a positive hope for the future? Because the past few years have been pretty dark for law enforcement. Do you, do you see the, the tide turning at all based on this kind of an approach? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the only way forward for us is dealing with these things on our own, on our own. Right. And one of my themes of my show is that it's up to us. No one else is coming. Be the one. And it's, yeah. it's really that be the one. Exactly. Yep. And that's really the call for everybody to step up. And again, another theme is to fight in the shade, which means in our context one. to, to be okay with the fact that not everyone's going to like us and that there are people out there that are going to hate us, but we still have a job to do on their behalf regardless. And if you can't manage yourself and care for yourself, uh, and I'll get real weird here, and love yourself, uh, then you're going to be uh, a detriment to the profession in, in as a whole. But also, you're not going to you're not going to survive it. You know, it, it's funny. We we preach all the time officer safety, officer safety. When you get on scene at anything, what's your first concern? Officer safety. Uh, if you're driving too fast solo to a call and you wrap your car around a tree now you have to divert resources and and you can't help why is it so difficult for a lot of cops to make the leap between officer safety at work and taking care of yourself again because if you're not taking care of yourself how are you supposed to help other people how how do you get them to see the the bridge across those things because there's a huge disconnect there yeah there certainly is and 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 I'll be the first to say, too, and part of my show is that I'm the guinea pig, right? So I'm not perfect in any way. And I'm only discovering these things through the process of the show and the people I've talked to and then implementing some of these things. Mm-hmm. I still struggle with some of these issues, right? I still uh, – I, I know that when I'm on night shift, uh, I will crave, like, processed carbohydrates and fats like mad, and I will give into those more often than when I'm on, night, on day shift. So – it's, it's a constant struggle. And some of it is really subconscious. We don't realize. Like, I didn't realize that I felt like crap after four months of night shift until I talked to sleep experts who said, it's because your body is kicking out the same stuff that makes someone clinically depressed. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a much bigger issue and, and a much bigger challenge than why can't you just eat right? Your, your body is chemically changing when you do things like that or when you go through... Uh, 
uh, acute stress events like that or traumas, right? And so a lot of it is, is just an education part of it. You know, I, I, I don't think cops are walking around happy that they're cynical and jaded and out of shape. And oh, the, the I, first I, two I apply, hey, but not the hey, out of shape one. I'm no. sitting right here, man. I can, I can see yeah. and hear you. Whatever. God, man. <laughs> But, mean. you know, they just think that's they think that's the way they are. Like, that's just them as a person. Right. And they don't realize that that's who they've nece- they've probably become uh, because of the job and because of the environments we work in and that they don't necessarily have to be that way. You don't have to be bitter, cynical, jaded. You, that's that at some point is a choice. But oftentimes we don't realize that some of these things are not I don't say our fault. It's just it's environmental again. Yeah, so so as a young guy sitting in the squad room, and like you said, uh, coming into this, you know, if I'm a millennial coming in and I'm I'm open to all of these processes, but there's that cynical guy, that stereotypical, uh, you know, old cop down at the end of the table. What yeah. advice can you give to these new guys to approach that guy? Uh, is it going to be the hey, you should listen to this podcast that I listen to? Hey, do you journal? What's the best What's, way to start hey, that conversation? Get off my lawn. Hey, you, yeah, you and your 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 beans of pods, and I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you beatniks and your poetry and your rock music. Beatniks. Well, that's that's what millennial. We talked about it. You know, millennials, hipsters, hippies, beatniks. It's always the younger generations coming up with something new that guys your age don't let. Hey, heck, again. Uh, wow. Sorry, but Damn. what's the best way to approach that cynical cop and try to try to turn them? You know, that's that's those are the toughest ones to crack, right? And I think. The first thing is connecting with them through your own story. And uh, for me, it would be uh, sharing some of the challenges I've had and just letting them know that they're what it, without assuming whatever their issue is, letting them know that they're probably not alone, you know, that that if they've, uh, you know, struggled through financial problems or the divorce or, uh, you know, trauma from an event uh, that we've all gone through some versions of those things uh, and that we all are, I love this quote from I think Plato that everyone is fighting a battle you know nothing about, right? And so if you can approach them with some empathy and compassion, I think you can slowly, and you tell your story, I think that's important, you tell your story about your struggles and it's incumbent on us leaders to throw ourselves under the bus and be vulnerable because I think strength is in vulnerability not in pretending that those things don't happen mm-hmm. um, any cop who says that they're, they've never been scared I'll write off as just a bullshit uh, bull that's close that's that was close that was, that was, that that was, was close. Really close yeah, yeah. this ain't the and crossover I, show man <laughs> yeah and do, do you think that this this new uh, social and sharing media the, the chance for you know uh an aggravated cop or a fireman that's just on the edge to be able to go online and just literally spill everything out um uh, you know, as if the internet was our own little self-help group. Do you right. think that's helping, or on the flip side, is there maybe a little too much oversharing going on? And do you think it's difficult to find that balance? Well, when you're talking about stuff like social media, you, what these people are spewing into is just an echo chamber, right? So they are just they're they're spewing into a group of people that are also bitter and angry, and then they're just convincing everybody and themselves and everybody else that they're correct. And there's no outside, I hardly ever see in these social media, a real conversation where someone's like, hey guys, let's think about this a different way. Um, if someone needs to offload, I highly, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with going to, you can call them a therapist or a coach. Uh, it doesn't have to be a licensed practitioner, a clergy person, like I say in your church. Having someone to get off gas some of that too is, is absolutely critical. And it has to be someone who doesn't necessarily know the job, but knows you and um, is is patient. That sounds familiar. If if you go to circle back to talking to the uh, the old cynical guy, and you're the supervisor, and you were the one who's kind of create well, I don't want to say you're creating it, but I, I I feel like you would be kind of responsible for what you're going to allow in your lineup on your team. And if you know your agency is anything like mine, it's a seniority-based sign-up, so you're going to be stuck with who you're stuck with based on how long they've been on the job. So as a supervisor, specifically, and then i got to follow up, as a supervisor, how do you initiate that conversation with, let's just do it now, with Gary? 
<laughs> Gary is a problem. Gary is our problem child. Gary's always a problem. Oh my God! Wherever so how, you put him, how, how are you going to have that conversation with Gary? You're going to go grab coffee. You're going to pull him in the office. How, how, what does that look like for you? Uh, I've had some. I've had Gary on my squad. I think I know him well. Uh, we're <laughs> we're not uh, we're not seniority based. We're just kind of um, it's a lotto system almost where you just get assigned to a squad and then you rotate with that squad through shifts. So uh, we have a whole mix of people in all shifts. On patrol, um, it you know it depends. Sometimes uh, if they're more comfortable a coffee, I'll go have coffee with them or a lunch, and and I'll remind them. I'll try and remind them, you know, that there was a point where they got into this job, and that where they loved it, and the intervening intervening years obviously had a had a strong effect on that. But remember that these young kids who are just they, he was that kid at one point, and I usually task them whether they're an FTO or not, to, to, to show them that he's going to leave a legacy when he leaves or she leaves one way or another. And that legacy is either going to be that people talk highly of him and remember him as impactful and powerful, or they're glad that he's gone. Gary. And <laughs> Don't be a Gary. And, Bye, Gary. Yeah, don't be a Gary. <laughs> and really, you'll get, you'll get the hard exterior sometimes, but really, truly, this job, we do this jobs, we do these jobs, right? Not because we're not accountants. We're not, well, you are, I guess, MC a little <laughs> bit, but, but I mean, like, we're not account, we don't, we do this because it's a calling, right? And that, as corny as it is, it's a calling. We, we have other things we could do, but this is what we've chosen to do. And we're not, we don't go to work and punch a clock as an accountant or as a medical assistant or any number of jobs where it's just uh, punching the clock and then you're out this means so much to us right and it did to every cop and every fireman and every medic at some point and we want we want meaning in our lives right we we need i think people all people need to understand that their life has meaning and when you tap into that and when you can show that when you if you leave and you've meant something to the agency and the young people that come past that's where your legacy becomes because these guys are going to be here for another 30 years and they're going to be the ones talking about you long after you're gone. Yep. Do you want them cursing your name or do you want them wishing you were back? And then challenging them to really be the person that helps guide these young guys and shows them. I mean, often these older Garys have lots of time in detectives or motors or um, any number of other specialty assignments and they have something to offer. And I will usually assign them some something based on their in their wheelhouse to teach everybody else and give them a little buy into the squad. So let's let's flip the question a little bit. Let's say uh, Gary's not your sergeant, but Gary's your beat partner, and you and Gary are the same rank, and the sergeant's kind of disconnected, whatever, or he's not handling business the way he should. How can I, as Gary's partner, tell Gary, "Hey, man, knock it off." It, how, how would you have that conversation? That's a tough one, uh, especially when you add in the dynamic of you know time on time on the job because we're always deferential to to that time, right? But I mean, at some point, it may need to be that blunt, and maybe he needs maybe Gary needs a wake up call for the fact that his attitude is infecting everybody else. You know, I think the vast majority of us don't want to be that guy, and they just don't realize that they are. They think they're so inside their own head. That with their own issues that they don't realize they're just collateral damage. Uh, they're leaving collateral damage all around them. And sometimes getting called down on it is the right thing to do. Uh, the other gentle way is maybe just having a squad intervention where the young guys or the rest of the squad comes together and uh, in numbers and just kind of holds an intervention of sort. We call it squad court. But, you know, um, <laughs> where, where they go, hey, this isn't working for us. You this you got to change. Yeah. The last two questions, MC, that you just asked are pretty much on every fire promotional exam is how are you oh, going to okay. handle that trouble employee? Um, you know, say on a BC's exam, battalion chief's exam, you go out to, to station 62 that's out on the outskirts and these guys are in their PT gear at nine o'clock in the morning. How do you handle it? And one of my favorite answers and the things that I do is I lead by example. I show them what my expectation is and I live that expectation and hopefully that rubs off on them. Does it always work? Is there always something else that needs to happen? But, you know, it, it all comes back to be the one, be the change, be the inspiration for your crew, for your partner, for your sergeant to be able to make positive changes in the service. And as some things catch and, and you get traction where the guy says meditation's stupid, but I've been journaling for a month and wow, it's amazing. Build on that. 
-hmm. there's always going to be different solutions. So yeah, it's, and, it's and, good and, to know that all three disciplines are going through the same BS with Gary. Yeah, and I think, <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's, you're absolutely right to lead by example. I think even the line guy who's got less time on can lead by example. Always. And, and they can, he can uh, seize on the opportunity and in the bigger picture of stuff, Gary might be his problem, but he's also an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if Gary chooses not to change, the young guy is going to make himself more and more valuable to that uh, squad and that sergeant and that station. And you can expand that out from there because he's taking on more work. He's taking on more responsibility. And if he's doing it with a good attitude of give me more, I want to own this. This is, I am going to be the one versus I'm doing Gary's work for him too. That, you know, jerk. Uh, if he comes at it with the right attitude, he's going to make himself known. He's going to make a name for himself and he's going to get promoted a lot faster than a Gary. Fantastic, man. This this has been a great conversation. We're, we're coming up on probably about the 25 minute uh, mark or so. So I want to kind of wrap it up and ask you, four quick fire questions that we we didn't pre-plan so you're gonna have to be quick on your feet and then there's two bonus questions ready oh go what has been your favorite episode that you've done for your show to date uh probably clint bruce uh navy seal lieutenant former nfl football player talks about leadership amazing dude is that also your favorite guest of all time uh favorite guest uh probably andy stump Again, I don't know. I'm going to the SEAL Team guys, but a SEAL Team Six lieutenant, uh, world record holder in the uh, uh, the squirrel suit. Squirrel suit. Oh, the, like the flying, the, the flying the body, squirrel thing. Flying, yeah, yeah, yeah. As as a licensed uh, certified and, skydiver, I would like to try one of those. Yeah, someday. and I just want to say that that was my world record first. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what has been the most actionable intel you've been given interviewing somebody for your show? Uh, boy, that's a good one, uh, and I have to be fast. Um, pressure. The the probably is the different ways that we can check in with ourselves, whether that is through meditation or journaling, or just uh, uh, pausing for a moment and recognizing what's going on, uh, what you're feeling, uh, where your body is tense, those sorts of things. Uh, that's that's probably that's probably it. All right, I'll, I'll give you a bonus, and you didn't ask for it, but I'll give you a bonus. Is that even all my guests, all these guys who are top performers, all these cops who are top performers, uh, all these people who've been on the show, everybody is trying to move their ball forward, right? We're, so there's nobody who's got it all figured out. I thought you were going to take that a different direction. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate you for not doing that. Moving <laughs> balls forward. Right, yes, it. yes. <laughs> uh, they're, all, they're all trying to advance and make their – like we're all in this. Everybody wants to do this. It's not like one guy's got it figured out and he's holding the, the potion. Mm -hmm. Everybody's – here and that's why I think uh, those of us and our listeners should realize that they're not so you they're not so uh, it's not so scary to go out and try and do these things because everyone else is trying to do them too. Two two last questions. What has been your biggest takeaway in your podcasting journey, personally or professionally, whichever one? What has meant the most to you so far? Uh, you know, when I started the podcast, I didn't think anyone a would listen and b would I get any guests on the show and. I realize that we actually do have a lot of support out there. Uh, it's a lot of quiet support. And when I have, I have emailed a lot of people and I've had some pretty high profile guests and they jump at the chance to come on because they want to help us. You know, I'm a small show compared to like Joe Rogan, uh, obviously. I mean, I'm a small show compared to any podcast almost. But, um, you know, I've had some of the same guests and it's because they want to help us. They, they, they realize the situation we're in, the challenges we face, and they feel like they can contribute, and this is their way of giving back. And so that's been reaffirming uh, to me. Final question. How much do you hate Elon Musk? Because <laughs> <laughs> his last name is Tesla. Oh, I don't... Yeah, I you, mean, don't, you don't get it? The test, any joke no? you have to explain is... Oh. Yeah. Well, you're actually the, a firefighter. The real, slow. the real two questions, and this is all this other podcast making people better stuff, whatever. What is your dog's name, and why is he in the cone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my dog's, dog's name is Bodie. Uh, my kids picked the name. Mm -hmm. And he's in a cone because he got a little infection on his tail, and he was like about to chew it off. So about to chew it off. It. See, those are important guest questions. That's then, why, so that's why I have to oftentimes uh, put a cone on him, because I swear to God, if a day goes by where he's not trying to chew on his tail oh man it's ridiculous yeah he's my tongue start today I'm constantly sorry. with the water bottle leave it <laughs> leave it <Yeah. laughs> well garrett thank you so thank much you for so making much. the time uh we want to respect your time and uh let you go 
But before we do that, where can people find you? And more importantly, uh, how can they find you on your podcast? Uh, the podcast can be found, well, the website is thesquadroom.net. Uh, the podcast is available on iTunes and all the other major media players or uh, podcast players out there. Uh, and uh, on Instagram, at the squad room, and Twitter, at the squad room. Uh, they can go to Facebook and sign up for our group uh, where we have discussions and I do some live recordings and stuff like that where I talk to the audience and we share some ideas back and forth. But those, that's where they can find us. Well, I don't, I don't want to tease the, uh, the Facebook group too much, but uh, <clears throat> one of us is on it as well. Not, and I don't mean him or you. I don't know which one. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. would be me. <laughs> so you want to come hang out with uh, Garrett and MC, you know, Facebook's the place to do it. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Cheers. Appreciate your time. Thank uh, you. Appreciate you. Appreciate your show. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Good All right, fun. dude. Take care. Bye. Man, that was a great episode. Good Thank stuff. you to Thank you, uh, Garrett to Slaw to, for coming on the show. And you know what? My biggest thing that I took away from that, honestly, is the fact that the man has hope for the future of of, of my career. Well, it's not, not be my career specifically, yeah. but in general. He, the legacy of law enforcement yeah, will continue. Absol- absolutely. It's it's not, you know, these are our dark days, but uh, the, the, the sun will come out tomorrow, Annie. I feel like you right. stole that from something. Yeah. I don't think that's an MC oh, original. Oh, oh, what I got it. MC from this interview was, look what he's accomplished with the squad room in 87 episodes that we have barely accomplished in about 400. Uh, I think that we is, can learn a lot there. We probably can. It's kind of, it kind of makes me sad. You know what would make me feel better? Bolo. All right. MC, on the nightstand recently, I had Dan Brown's Origins. Always just love a good fiction. Really enjoyed the book. It took me back to some of the early stuff. What do you got going on? I just finished actually listening on, on Audible the the great book about the Golden State Killer, All Be Gone in the Dark, by the recently departed Michelle McNamara, who I didn't know, but I found out later, was married to Patton, the comedian Patton Oswalt. Interesting. Very, very interesting, because these uh, killings throughout the late 70s and early 80s happened in our little neck of the woods here. Uh, it was fascinating to be to listen to this book and know that i've driven down some of those streets where crazy, these right? heinous heinous things happened so if uh, if you're interested in in getting audible uh we can definitely hook you up with that simply go to wyeradio.com slash audible you get a free 30-day trial and one free audiobook and you can't go wrong with this one not only was mcnamara an incredible writer honestly probably one of the top five writers i've ever read she can turn a tale uh but it was also narrated exceedingly well so uh, i'll be gone in the dark michelle mcnamara i absolutely loved it good stuff guys make sure you go over to audible uh mention us on that link make sure you're sharing the show with all your friends whether it be in the squad room the ambulance yard oh, or over the breakfast table i, I see what you see did, what I did there. there yeah you bring over the breakfast table at the firehouse or the good lunch table or the dinner table or as mc likes to say pass notes from barca lounge to Barca Lounge. Absolutely. Because that's yeah. where firemen are all the time, all right? All the time. Well, if you, you're not shining something. You guys are going to be sending them to wyeradio.com. Look at us. Look for us on social media. Look at us as well. Why wouldn't you? WYE Radio Show on Twitter and WYE Radio Show is our Facebook group MC. You know, everybody's got a page, but you throw out an update and not everybody sees that's it. So true. come and join the group. It's a private group. We'll bring you on in. Feel free to share whatever you want to share over there. WYEradio.com, guys. Share it. Do it. Thank you. So until next time, do me a favor. Let's do this again. Kind of an homage to the previous uh, iteration of a a radio show we used to do. A little little thing called the crossover show. Mm -hmm. Look out for plans. Be safe on the bike.